Hello, people of the internet. So, back on the garden tractor. Um, I did head gaskets on it uh, a while back. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a video on that. Um, I haven't posted it yet. Anyway, well, by the time this posts, it'll have been posted. And, and anyway, you know how this stuff is done. It's all done in bulk. It's not, you know, live TV. Uh, anyway, get everything on. Still acting up. Still blowing compression into the crankcase. Tired, frustrated, aggravated. So, uh, what I decided to do is bring in the third unit and take the 26 horse V-twin off of it and put on this one. Uh, that one also had some... Pro I hadn't gone through it. I hadn't messed with that one. I don't know. It was the newest unit. It's actually a slightly different engine series family than this one. It's a 730 instead of a 25. But they're close enough for government work. We can make it happen. Upon reflection and calming down and realizing things, I think that due to some distractions uh, during the process of doing the head gaskets, I botched the head gasket job. I think, and I, I don't remember, I didn't, I was aggravated and I did not properly tear down the engine to diagnose why is this still happening. I was just angry, mad, and threw my hands up and started doing something else, switch gears. It happens, it's not advisable, but it happens. Anyway, thinking back, processing, I think due to distractions, uh, I got one of the head gaskets on backwards, ups or upside down, however you want to refer to it in this scenario. Uh, so, anyway, that's where we're at. Show you everything here. We got a helper who hopefully will not be super distraction. Engine that came off that honestly is probably good, but it's just going to go to scrap. Um, I did save the heads off of it because the heads were good. And these things, sometimes it's tough to find good heads anymore. And new heads are kind of pricey. This is the 24 or 26 horse. Uh, most everything is interchangeable between these engines. Um, most. I am going to use, I'm using the starter off of the 24 horse because it's the same starter. And uh, the 26 horse starter was acting up and broke. Like I went to take the battery cable off of the posit off of the primary terminal on the starter and it just ripped the solenoid into pieces. So that probably explains why it was having issues. Um, so I'm going to use the 25S harness. Um, I've got it jacked up right now to so I can start pushing oil back in. I took the 25S oil cooler and housing off because the 730 did not have an oil cooler. I'm also going to use the aluminum in intake off the 25 because I like it better. And since I'd already done the coil upgrade, whatever, the smart spark elimination on the 25, uh, the 730 is getting that as well. I got a stack of stuff over here to go through and try to figure out what shields and side plates and things I'm going to use. I'm also not going to use that whole low uh low mount setup on the 730 i'm putting the 25s high mount setup on it probably doesn't matter a whole lot to anybody but i like it better it's personal opinion this is the unit that got stripped out saved as much off of it that i thought would be useful between these two older units because a lot of it is the same not all of it a lot of it is though uh this one is just new enough though i don't know i don't know if you can no you can't see it in there it doesn't matter um, hold on. That unit though, the black one that I, I was just showing, it has a uh, vertical drive pulley for the hydrostat, whereas the other two tra garden tractors have a horizontal pulley for the hydrostat. So it goes from a vertical, the belt on those two tractors go from a vertical plane do a 90 or partial 90 and come up to a horizontal plane. Uh, don't know why they did that. I was reading some stuff on the forums uh, where some people hadn't seen combinations like that. 
Uh, but they do exist. They're out there. Other people have said they've seen them. It's just one of those oddities, I guess. I don't, I don't know. But hopefully, we get the head gaskets on this time. I won't screw it up this time. And we'll have a good running tractor for down in the garden. Because stuff's planted. Stuff's coming up. And I don't necessarily mind driving the trucks and stuff down there. Uh, it's just... It would be nice to have a small piece of equipment for my wife and not have to drive the vehicles through the field. Unless I had to. It, you know, extra cleaning, and I don't clean. So, we get to this. Hopefully in a little bit, we'll see some updates. Okay. Both heads are on. Valve covers are on. Muffler's lined up. That's actually an advantage of uh, this setup. I guess technically you could probably do this with any of them. Because the holes in the frame line up. This is... Uh, I'm going to call it a three-piece muffler assembly. So, you've got... The muffler and the two lead pipes, that makes your three pieces. Originally on this 24 horse chassis, it was a two piece muffler assembly where you had like a chambered or an unchambered, I guess a silencer here. And then you had a muffler body that ran down the side. And both of those two parts are unavailable from Sears, they're unavailable in the general aftermarket as near as I could find. You know, Stens didn't have a number, Rotary didn't have a number. Um, while these are still fairly expensive, I think they're around $100 and $130, uh, they're readily available. So that is something good. And if you and if you do still have a good older engine and you just have bad muffler assemblies, you can buy this. It will fit. Um, I don't know how well it's going to come up, but you can see. It lines up, the bolt holes all line up down there. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly which shield I'm gonna be able to use. Originally this comes with a, with a flat shield and then the, the unit that this engine came off of uh, has a different shaped shield. But I have both, holes are all in the same place. We'll just figure out which one fits best, looks best, whatever. Uh, now, now I gotta get all this gobbledygook put back together and we'll see what happens then. Okay. So, something I figured I'd point out is I went ahead and used the appropriate covers. Uh, can I get it in the camera? Are you going to focus, camera? Of course, there it goes. So, this is the engine. It's a CV730S. And just for... Yeah, exhaust fits. Like I said, just for general reference here, um, the governor shaft... And so subsequently the governor arm are different between the 730 and the 725. This one has a smaller shaft diameter, so the arm doesn't interchange between the two of them. Uh, so far that's about the biggest difference I've seen on them. Uh, we're going to get, like I said, we're going to get this all bolted up. Hopefully, I'll be able to test run it soon. And hopefully, it's not blowing crank pressure, you know, cylinder pressure back into the crankshaft. All right. And we're back. Uh, new day. Sorry. Got the fans on. It's loud. So, we got the tractor together, running. Uh, but it definitely had some surging issue uh, related to the governor. Probably it's because I changed the way the whole uh, throttle linkage setup is run. Uh, originally this engine had low mount throttle linkage. I prefer the high mount throttle linkage setup. So I utilized the high mount off of the 25 series onto the 730 series. Uh, I had to do some fiddling with the governor. I think I pretty well got it figured out. Uh, so let's see what we got. All right, everything's back on. Everybody's going. I uh, came in. Uh, can you see? Let's see. Can you see down there? Okay. Um, need a pointer. Okay. So, first thing, that shaft right there is your mechanical governor. It's held on with this fancy pinch clamp. That's a dog leg. So what you do is you loosen that nut, you put a pick or something small in there, you turn it counterclockwise, and while you're holding it and you're holding the dog leg, this portion of the dog leg, 
up, which means throttle's all the way open. You tighten the pinch nut back down. So, okay, I'd done that before. I took it apart, I double checked it. Still having major surging issues. Now, it would correct itself. It would surge, and then it would correct itself, and then when you change throttle speeds or load on it, it would surge again and correct itself. It just was, uh, it wasn't like an initial surge. It wasn't like a vroom, bro, and, and fixed. It was, you know, 30 seconds of it. But then initially, we have four spring holes in the governor arm, and then down where you can't see, uh, but where this spring goes, there's like five spring holes that come towards the front of the tractor. And it was in hole two, the spring was in hole two on each one of those. So the first thing I did was I left it in hole two on this side and dropped it down to hole one, which didn't help. Oh, again, I left this side and brought it up to hole three, which kind of helped, but not really. So I put it back in hole two, changed this one to hole one. Well, what I'm considering hole one, anyway, closest to the engine block. I kept things about the same, not, not too far off, but about the same. Moved it down into hole one on the governor arm, left it at hole one on there, and it is much, much, much better. Now I get a minor surge right at, uh, right at change. And other than that, it does fine. Let's see here. They were low. And that's what it's doing. I can live with that. I'm happy with it. It's fine. Everything's working. Charging seems to be a little off. Now, I've had this flywheel off twice. I know the magnets are attached. I know they're in good shape. I know the stator's in good shape. It's got an old rectifier on it, but it tested fine. I'm hoping it's just a problem in the gauge. It's an old gauge. Hoping it's just a problem in the gauge. Sometimes it reads 100% that it's charging perfectly. Sometimes it reads that it's almost not charging. And this doesn't really have anything to do with like idle speed, okay? It's not like, oh, well, you're at the lowest idle speed, so it's not charging, and then you rev it up and it charges. No, this, this is at a, at a set idle speed. Generally, I know, I know for full charge, you always go full throttle. I've been testing it both full throttle and mid throttle, and it's it's hit and miss. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe there's a bad ground somewhere. Maybe the rectifier is going. I don't know. I've hooked a voltmeter up and tested it, and it seems to be working at the rectifier itself. So I, I'm going to leave well enough alone. I've got extras. I've got an extra stator. If it goes bad, it goes bad. I can fix it. It's not a big deal. But. Yeah, so Garden Tractor 2 is finally back up. I mean, it took an engine swap, probably because I screwed up the gaskets when I did the other one. Uh, and it is, you know, it kind of sucks that I'm not going to have three of these units around, but in all honesty, that black one uh, that was the newest unit, it did have the least parts availability in comparison to these two. I guess just for whatever, these were much more popular models. Um, it had less parts availability. It had a weaker hydro. That, now they're all hydrostats. That one had, well, had a better hydrostat than like a lawnmower or a lawn tractor. It did have a weaker hydrostat in comparison to this unit and its twin. Um, I don't know. It's probably all going to scrap. I keep looking at the other engine. I, I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, my boy isn't big enough. I was hoping he'd be big enough by now to. Uh, uh, ride one and operate it and he's not they're just too big um, so I don't know it's probably gonna get loaded up in the big tractor and taken down but uh, I don't know I hate getting 
I'm a hoarder. I hate getting rid of stuff when I don't really need to, but we've already disassembled half of that tractor frame. Eh. We'll figure out. That's a, that's a future me problem. So for now, this one's back together. I'll get the hood on and I'll be able to move it when I feel like it. Uh, so it's a win. It's good. You guys get out, do something you like, have some fun. See ya.